Thank you so much for attending the conference and uh, just the brief sit down to um, to discuss what your main takeaways were. What was what was most interesting? Um, did you find um, coming to the end of the day and, and still going strong? Well, we have been discussing this subject for ages already in different circles. But I find in uh, in this uh, today's discussion here really excellent. This is the interdisciplinary approach. You have the practice, you have the workers, trade unions, you have employers, you have also regional government representatives, and you have the, 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 the society dealing on the high level, on the research level, and to bring all these stakeholders together, that gives a new flavor to the discussion. And that opens up to discussing some new ideas. And uh, Talking about uh, just transition in our close circles is interesting, but it doesn't really make any steps ahead. This conference, I think each of the participants will take home some stuff and, and food for thought. And I know that very practical ideas emerged. For, for me, for example, some good topics, what we can do together with our Slovak uh, neighbors, not only with the trade unions, but with the research community and with the governmental part. And that's really something good. Would you mind pointing out what, what maybe what was like the key sort of food for thought that you took away from this? Um, maybe something that was unexpected or, 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 or interesting from, from a different facet? Um. Not really unexpected, but, but uh, some new ideas and, and, and really points for practical work together, practical cooperation. What I have in mind, for example, along the Danube side with Slovakia, and I, I take this concrete example, along the Danube side, you have uh, 80, 70, 80,000 uh, workers commuting every day between Slovakia and Hungary. And that is something where uh, both the regional local authorities and as trade unions we have to deal with. Until now it was not so easy. And now maybe we can find some steps ahead. And that's, that's very important, especially in the automotive industry. You have in the Trinova region, in the Bratislava region, you have in the Dür and Komarum region, industrial parks with, with strong automotive uh, and Estergom automotive industry uh, uh, sites. We need to talk about. And once we talk about it, immediately just transition is one of the high topics. So that's, that's what I have in mind. Uh, and even you, you have existing uh, sources, uh, resources to that, the Interreg, the, the, the uh, different EU funds uh, related to that. So we, we should make use of them. And that's also something where we can help regional development. When my, one of my points today in the discussions was that we shouldn't only discuss about the automotive industry as such. We have to see it in a wider social, economical uh, surroundings. What I have in mind is we have to think from the perspective of the society from the communities, be it local, national, whatsoever, European. We have to see how people in their everyday life are impacted by changes, by the challenges. And it's not only about those directly working in these industries, but there are families, hundreds of thousands of families all around Europe, which are dependent on decisions very often made far away from them and they have no chance, they are just subjects. And that's how we have to see. It's not only whether electrical cars or hybrid cars or the internal combustion engine cars are the questions of future. It's about how a society will take it. Are you able to pay for that? Uh, do you have existentially, you can allow existentially to join into the electric car uh, projects 
or you are just at the end of the end of the uh, <laughs> queue. This morning, one of the lead uh, speakers uh, told that the European and called the European Commission to stop the sale of uh, used and old cars. What about those for whom that's the only chance? Environment is extremely important, but people are also. So we have to find a balance and we have to see. And today we had quite a lot of discussions about this kind of questions. How, how aware do you think your members, the, the workers on the ground, so to say, are? Because we discussed this in, in a very sort of closed groups in a sense, right? And we're, we're trying to push beyond these boundaries and have effective communication over the changes that are happening in the industry and what sort of trends we see unfolding. Um, are the workers on the floor sort of beginning to prepare or are they feeling the pressure to change and to adapt to, to this changing context? Well, those who directly are involved in automotive uh, industry, being uh, be it the primary or the supplier chain, what, wherever the supply chain they are, they do deal with these questions because they are subject, direct subjects. But what about those who are just living in those regions where the automotive industry has a strong weight? For example, you have uh, also in Hungary some of the regions where automotive industry is the number one. I, I, I learned today a, a very striking uh, figure from Trnava, from Slovakia, that in that region half of the GDP is coming through the automotive industry. So it is not only those who are directly involved, but what about and who feel the need to think about it and who are how to say, exposed to any kind of changes. But those who are farther away from the industry, who don't depend directly, but if a region depends on that, it's about the total labor force. So we have to sensitize people, not only workers, but the society in general, that just transition is not a mantra of trade unions or workers' representatives, and just nice slogans, but just transition in the middle, medium term already is a question of decent life, an existential issue. So we have to deal with that. Most probably we have to find the language to that. Most probably we have to bring in this question to public education for the next generations. I'm a, an eternal naive optimist, I dream that the young generation being educated now and coming to the labor market would change. I have some very positive examples. My wife teaches in, in the gymnasium and she uses these methods. So I see, and the pupils whom I have daily contact with in the school, that yes, they are getting open and thinking in another way. The middle and elder generation we have to sensitize as well. That's a good question, who and how? And for that we need, for the trade unions, for the workers' representations, capacity building, mm -hmm. technically and also materially. And that's where the European funds should be available and should be used for. It's not for us as trade unions, it's for the output which we can generate and, and elaborate. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your insights and your ideas. I, I hope those will be taken to heart. Um, I appreciate you taking the time. And I hope that you will continue and we will work together. Thank you. For sure. Thank you.